Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Nightmare Podcast. This is episode 110, and on this podcast, we'll be talking about the 80s movie House. I'm Christy, and I am joined by... Brian, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Brian the horror guru. <laughs> so yeah, this week is House's anniversary. So happy anniversary to House. It came out on February 28th of 1986. 38 years. Yeah. Yeah. So, before we talk about the movie, when was the first time you watched the movie, Brian? Um, I feel like I was a kid. Like, yeah. like it was on, like, not, maybe TBS or something. So, like, it was censored and stuff. Yeah. But I, I feel like that's when I first saw it. First saw it? So, on just regular TV? Yeah, it was just regular okay. TV. Of course, for me, it was... <laughs> HBO, <laughs> like every other movie I watched when I was a kid in the 80s, it was always on HBO. Um, that, and then we had ended up recording it. My parents recorded it for me off of HBO. So I always had it on, on, on tape, and I watched it all the time in my bedroom. It's something I grew up with, and I've always loved the movie. I always thought it was funny. It had, you know, little moments uh, that are a little scary, too, at least back then for me. Um, but it's it's... It's one of those movies that's been a very big part of my of my life, of my horror watching. I've seen this one million times. <laughs> and I feel like everybody out there pretty much likes this movie. Don't mm -hmm. you? I mean, yeah. I don't. I posted about it and everybody's like, oh, house, house, house. Everybody was all about some house. Yeah, so, I, th I think everyone loves house. And then people are now just starting to get around to house too. Mm-hmm. Um, that I, one I had to I, grow on me. Yeah, I, I don't hear anyone talking about House 3 or 4. Which, which is sad because <laughs> I actually love House 4. I like, like them. Like, I, I mean, House 3 really isn't a house movie. Mm -mm. It was just, you know, coined that for overseas purposes Wasn't to it sell called it. called The Horror Show or something? It's, called um, something it's like else. the last horror, horror show, show or I think, something like yeah, that. Yeah, because I have it at home. I just can't remember what the yeah. heck it was called. So, but um, I love House 4 because I love yeah. how it ties back to this one. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I like them all, but like yeah. you said, part three isn't like part three is good, but it has it's nothing not to do really with the anything franchise. to do with all this. But it is a good standalone yeah. movie if you want to just call it that. Um, part two did have to grow on me. We did do a podcast a long while back on, yep. on part you and two. Sleepaway Steven. Yeah, so we can you can go back and watch that episode with uh, Steven. Um, but yeah, that one had to grow on me a little bit because I did think that was like way more goofier than the first yeah, one yeah that, that one's more like the family style yeah this one's like the true horror comedy yeah which i got at one point it wasn't supposed to be a comedy but they right. made it a comedy and but yeah. it worked out in the end yeah it did work out in the end so um again like i said it's the anniversary of house um came out in 86 but i, I mean it was Made in 85. Yeah. It just didn't get released until in the States until February 28th of 86. Um, directed by Steve Miner, which we all know. Love from, him. Yeah. From Fire 13. I really and, wish I could meet him. Yeah, that'd be and cool. just tell him, like, how much his movies, like, just, like, a, a lot of his movies, like, Friday 13th, 2 and 3, Halloween H2O, this. You know something else, though? that I guess I didn't, I never realized as a kid, but I did watch this particular movie as a kid. It's not horror, but he did it. Soul Man. I don't remember. Okay. It's not a horror movie. Well, I know it's not a horror movie, but I'm trying to... It's where the white kid wants to be black to okay. fit in, and yeah. he like, yeah. It's C. Thomas Howell. Oh, okay. So Yeah, it was yeah. a comedy. I, I always, again, it was on HBO, and I always watched it when I was a kid. I thought it was a fun movie. But I always liked C. Thomas Howell, too, so I was a big fan of his. Anywho, Steve Miner did that, too. So he did other things besides horror is what I'm trying to get at. So he did a lot of, a lot of good stuff. Um, one of the writers was Fred Decker, who we know of. A genius. Monster Squad, um, Night of the Creeps. You know, that, that's Fred Decker. Um, producer Sean S. Cunningham. We all know who he is as well. Mm -hmm. Friday 13th movies, just like Steve Miner. Um, the score by Harry Manfredini. Again, Friday 13th movies. <laughs> oh, the, and a lot of stuff, though. The score is kind of similar. It's, to it's very similar. The Friday 13th scores. You can totally tell it's Harry Manfredini. Yeah. Yeah. And what a super nice guy, too. We got to meet him not too long ago. Um, and then stunt coordinator is Kane Hodder. Mm-hmm. 
on this. People don't know that. So there's a fun fact was, for you. And he was a coordinator for part two. Yes, he was. And then he kind of shows up in part two. Mm-hmm. Yep. So there you go. So we know all the film directors, yep. producers. We know everybody. Um, anyway, movie is about Roger Cobb, who is played by William Cat. Um, he, all the actors and actresses in this were chosen because they were popular at the time um, in popular TV shows or whatnot at that time. So William Cat was doing the greatest American hero. That's what he's known for. Um, and then you also have George Went, who was in Cheers. Richard Mole, who was in Night Court. Um, Kay Lynn, she had done several um, TV movies and TV shows back in the 80s as well. Um, so good cast. Great cast. Good, great cast. Um, anyway, so you've got Roger Cobb, played by William Cat, and he is a writer, and he's a um, Vietnam vet, and um, you know he's wanting to write a book about that, about his experiences in Vietnam, and his aunt had just passed away as well, and he had lived. They kind of tell the story. So he also yep. has a son that. Vanishes. disappeared just kind of vanished disappeared as well so aunt has passed away son has vanished the wife has divorced him um his wife was played by Kay Lenz, and she's an actress within this movie she's divorced him so he's got you know not you know a little crazy life going on um but he's wanting to write this book and he decides to do it at the house that his aunt had committed suicide in and she was a little as they call in the movie, Little Looney Tunes, and always was saying that the house was haunted. And he comes to find that out <laughs> when he gets in there and writing his book. Um, but him and his wife had stayed at the house with his aunt um, in previous years, and that's where his son had gone missing. So that is his main reason for wanting, I think, to go back yeah. to the house besides just writing his book. I think he want, he's still trying to figure out what happened to his son. They still don't know. Cops don't know. Would so you've got that going on. Yeah, which is weird because, like, in the movie when he comes running to the front yard, you see the car kind of, like, screeching away. Right. So, you know, you kind of think, oh, he was abducted. Right. Which, I guess, in the end, he, he was abducted, but not by who you think it was. Right. 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 Because it's... <laughs> the house that did yeah. it. the house it's a giant haunted house yeah yes. yeah and there's lots going on in this house um <clears throat> but yeah you do see they do show flashbacks of that and he last sees his son in the swimming pool in the backyard and then all of a sudden he's just not in the pool yeah and he's just gone so you know basically the whole movie he's got he's trying still trying to find his son he's still dealing with the divorce from his wife you can kind of tell he still loves her yeah. So, I mean, would you consider him like a tragic hero? Because, I mean, like, yeah, he's kind of like, he went through the ringer. Like, he's mentally un. Well, I would say mentally depressed, almost. Uh, like, like he went through, a, I mean, through the well, war. Yeah, and with the Vietnam. Vietnam, um, losing a, you know, he's his got kids a lot going his on. Wife. But he doesn't seem like a depressed oh, person. Oh, no. In at the, movie? the beginning, when maybe you meet him, bit. he seems really depressed. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Like he's not all there, not quite like Looney Tunes until right. he gets to the house. <laughs> but right, but yeah. So you've got a lot of different little characters going on. So as so the rest of the movie, you know, he's in the house and the house is messing with him. There's things coming out of the closets, things coming out of medicine cabinets. I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff yeah. going on. Plus his flashbacks of Vietnam is happening. And you see his friend, Ben, Ben, who was played by Richard Mole. Um, you know, something tragic happened at Vietnam. And then that is played out a little later when we do get to see Ben later in the movie. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute mm -hmm. though. Um, but yeah, basically, so the house is just haunted and he's just trying to <laughs> figure it all out you know and find his son at the same time um and then you have george went who plays his nosy neighbor so nosy now when i was a kid he ticked me off <laughs> and he still is like you're irritating <laughs> he was very irritating <laughs> to him 
until you know a little later when he actually tries to he actually tries to help him out you know yeah. try to help capture photos of this monster coming out of the closet you know he he does try to help him out even though he is really nosy and well even he thinks that you know he's trying Cobb to help is, him really he, he thinks he's suicidal and then, right right you know he's worried about him you know as a neighbor trying to be a friend but to him, he's annoying. Well, yeah. To Roger, he's annoying. And it, it, me watching, like, okay, you're the annoying, nosy neighbor. Leave him alone. <laughs> um, it, it's weird, though, because, yeah. like, seeing George in this movie, but then, like, years on, he would do, like, the Masters of Horror mm -hmm. episode family. He's almost the same character. Yeah. It's where he's living by himself. So, I like, I would always think. I wonder, yeah, I didn't think about that. Like, I'm wondering, like. What if they were the same character? Could be. And this entire time he had like the dead bodies like in that house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, could be. Well, there goes your imagination. <laughs> yeah, could be. You never know, Brian. <laughs> um, I think the house is really. I wrote that down. I think the house itself is really cool. Which, yeah, here it is. I was. I want to visit the house. Yeah, I had. Like, a I know. I know. Send it's me on, pictures of it. I know it's in California. I know mm -hmm. it's on Melrose Avenue. So I feel like next time, whenever I get back to that area, I kind of want to visit the house. Yeah, I do too. It's gorgeous. I had, when I posted this, that we were doing this, I had one of my Instagram friends and he sent me pictures of him with the house and also the house from Witchboard. Yeah, which I, I know they don't film in either one of them anymore. Mm -mm. So, but, but it would, yeah, it'd be nice to look. Now they did do a lot of things different to the house to the actual house to make it look like this for the movie though it doesn't yeah. it, it, it's similar it, it is similar but it's not exact because they did do a lot of stuff to the front of the house yeah. to make it look how they wanted it to look for that the was, movie yeah i know a lot of the inside was built on a sound stage right the inside was a sound stage which the inside of the house was cool too though even though it was not real <laughs> but the house itself is really interesting and really cool looking though um and then oh i was going to say the word for the day is solitude solitude that's the word for the day <laughs> i was i remember when i was a kid i was like solitude what the hell is solitude because <laughs> he kept saying solitude um another thing i wrote down i love sandy's purple dress that's just me being female i've always loved her little the purple dress that she has on but then of course the witch or whatever <laughs> she's got it on but yeah i love that little purple dress that was always one of my my favorite outfits um you got two really good songs in this too um you're no good and dedicated to the one i love very good songs from way back in the day and every time i hear them i always think of house i don't know if you do mm -mm. No? No. See, I when I hear some songs that go with movies, that's just I'll tell you some some of them I do. Go but. with it. So when I hear either one of those two songs, if I if I do, I just always think of house. Yeah. I guess I don't really ever hear them being played. Well, no. But so. if I do, that's what I think of. Though. Like if I hear them play it'd be on my Spotify or whatever. Like, right. I don't ever hear them on the radio. Um Let me ask you this, Burn. Like what was like out of all of the crazy things going on in this house, like all the little creatures and everything happening in this house, like did you have like a favorite moment or a favorite creature or a favorite practical effect? Um, practical effect would definitely be the hand crawling up the kit's back. Okay, yeah, the severed hand. Yeah, because I love which that. Which is awesome. Um, and then for the fact that they didn't really have like the, um, I guess like, the graphics like we do now the flying uh bat skeleton kind of reminded me almost of army of darkness evil dead like oh yeah 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 especially does. with the whole shotgun thing right like, right he flips it the same mm -hmm. way and everything yep and i'm like okay that's really cool like i know it's you know all you know green screen well i guess black screen at that point because it's all black but there, there's a lot i that was when he Got into the medicine cabinet, right? Yeah, and it was and flying he's around. He's dropping there. down the road. Yeah, and he's dropping. And... Down. So that was always kind of freaky to me. That little so, part. So and it's just flying around. But then he has like the shotgun. And he like does the cocky right. flip, almost like ash and everything. Yep. And I'm like, okay, that's a fun little Easter egg. Yeah. And then um, I I just love all the practical, like all the practical effects. Yes. The, the creature coming out of the closet. Um, ben, even though. 
like on the close ups you could see the mouth moving of Richard in the in the costume and everything. Um but the work that went into making that costume, like he's like Richard's already a big guy as is. Yeah. He's got a good like a good angry face, like a good yeah. face for a villain, you know? So yeah. So I mean like he's already he's already tall as is. Yeah. To add that suit onto him made it even more Very menacing. scary. So I always wish like there was a figure for him. There needs to be. There needs to be. There so needs to be. I we can do a whole podcast on Big Ben. Yes. For real. So it's and it's I, I believe it is a very underrated character, only because it's just in this one movie. Yeah. But it is a very scary character. And like you said, the I mean, it's just done brilliantly. I yeah. mean, it's just awesome. The whole everything that they did for that is just insane. I can't imagine how hot he was in that suit. Exactly. But, yeah. Um, I did. I just someone compared the suit to Eddie from Iron Maiden. Oh, okay. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So. I see that. But I mean, if you really look, I mean, the detail. I mean, you can see the guts, the, the guts, the bones, the, the rib cage. Yeah. That he was able to stick the grenade up mm -hmm. and i mean it's so good so good all the practical effects yeah. this movie is fantastic for practical effects yes oh my god um and it just embodies that for the 80s this movie yeah. i think um the comedy too with it being a comedy horror i don't know it's it's the com it's kind of comedy that I guess I like because I'm weird about my comedy horror. There's See, some I like and some I don't like. This I, I don't mind. Yeah, I think they did a good blending of it. Mm -hmm. So like, because you had the pure horror, like the creature coming out of the closet, Ben being menacing, but then like you had the the fat demon lady, and then the right. the gardening and, and tools she was kinda that fun. that fly around the house after him. Like I'm going to talk the, about that. The shovel knocking on the door right. when he's in the bathroom. The fish, the sword, the, the, the swordfish, like. Well, that was hilarious it's hilarious so that's what i wrote down that was one of my favorite moments i can remember ever since i was a kid i always laughed and giggled at the swordfish so that it's that whole scene the swordfish going into the garden tools you know when he's in the bathroom the garden tools are mm -hmm. banging on the door and it's that whole scene all together is like one of my absolute favorites and it's funny because it it, it seems like it's pretty pretty um kind of easy in a way you've got this swordfish and it just flops around but it's hilarious and then you got just garden tools flying around that's about to get him which i just think is just i don't know it's so great but it just seems like oh that's kind of an easy thing but it's yeah. so fantastic yeah because i mean really the swordfish is it's just that bass fish yeah that's all it is it's the swordfish but it's he's a flopping swordfish. around he comes alive and it's just a funny moment so I love that, like, when he shoots the shotgun and the hole goes through, you just see, like, the wires. Yeah. Now, let me tell you okay, about wires. Fun fact. So on my DVD, you have your Blu-ray. I have the Blu-ray. From Arrow. I've got the old DVD. <laughs> there is a 12-minute making of on here, on the on the DVD, which I've watched it before, but I watched Obviously, it again. I, I'm, I'm sure it's on here. Too. Is there one on there? There might be a whole new one on the Blu-ray. Let's is see. A, Ding dong, old... you're dead. Is that what yours is called um, on there? The Making of House? Oh, no, it says it brand says, new documentary It just on says here. featurette, The Making of House. It's only like 12 minutes long on the on Okay, here. yeah, this one was like a whole brand new. Yeah, yeah, this is, it's just a 12-minute thing on here. So they talked about the garden tools. I did not know this little trick. Now I know this little trick. So, you know, they're hanging their, all the garden tools by fishing wire, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, for the practical effect. But they use, since the um fishing wire will have glares from all the lights going on there would be a glare on the fi the fishing wire what they use is like clear spray paint they spray paint all the wire they just sit there in the air and just spray paint it and apparently that makes it not glareable the fishing wire so that's huh. when you that's why you don't see it in the movie i was like oh something so simple okay <laughs> yeah they were just sitting there they had everything hung and then you they showed a guy with just some spray paint and just and it looks like he just sprang in the air because you don't see the fishing wire mm -hmm. but yeah he just sprang all the fishing wire and that'll make it not have any glares so yeah. then you won't see it in the movie the fishing wire they should try that more often now uh, right because a lot of these movies say you still see the wire and a can of spray paint don't cost too much <laughs> But I didn't know that. I didn't know that was what you can fix that issue with. I thought that was a fun fact. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Um, my other 
other thing I wrote down that I really liked, again, we just talked about the medicine cabinet. I always thought the medicine cabinet scene was really cool, too. Um, Because he throws something through the medicine cabinet, and now all of a sudden there's this big open space in there. But yeah, he opens the medicine cabinet, and medicine's still there. He looks out the window that's in the bathroom. Everything's fine. But yet... There's this big open space inside his medicine cabinet, and then he gets in there. I always thought that was a little freaky. I was like, for How me, scary is for that? For me, it was the kitchen scene, because the kitchen scene kind of reminded me of Beetlejuice almost. Oh, okay. To where he opens the door, and then he just almost goes right off a cliff. Right. Because it goes right into the water, and Ben's just staring there, and he you know, wraps Ben and throws Ben over the side. Right. And he's as he's crawling himself back up, like they do the side pan of it, of him like crawling... But then as he gets in, it, like, swings around, and it's just the kitchen again. See, this whole house is, like, in another dimension. <laughs> right? Yeah, which... The, Pretty and much. They, they had that painting that kind of alluded to it. Yeah, like, in another dimension, yeah. Well, it the painting showed that his uh, son the, was in the medicine cabinet, which is why he went and busted the medicine cabinet yeah. to see if something happened, and it did. But that was just a weird moment. Can you imagine just, like... Crawling inside your medicine cabinet into a big open space and just the only thing you have is a rope. And it's just this big open area and you don't know what's there because it's dark. And then now all of a sudden these monsters are flying at you. That's yeah. a little freaky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a cool moment. Um, I will um, make a confession. I've never talked about this. I've never said this, but I will say it now since we're here. Okay, so, again, I grew up with this movie, watched it so much. My grandparents had a medicine cabinet like that. Did you try to crawl through the medicine cabinet? No, but I was always hoping that when I would open it, that there would be, like, just nothing. (laughs) Okay, because just for some reason, I'm picturing you, like, breaking the medicine cabinet just to crawl through it. I didn't do that, but there were times I'd just go in there and be like, (sighs) (laughs) you know, And because it was exactly like the medicine cabinet in the movie. So I kind of did that just kind of hoping that something would happen. I mean, I know nothing's going to happen, but it was just my little child imagination in in liking this movie. And I was just like, oh. (laughs) But yeah, there was nothing in the medicine cabinet, though. All right. Well, But I did do that. So it turns out you're a Looney Tunes. Uh, I might be a little bit. I was hoping something was in the medicine cabinet. (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, anyway. Um, I think that's all I wrote down. What do you got? Um, what you got? What you... I would say we already talked about most of it. Um, so, like... <clears throat> so, like, when I first started watching the movie, I was kind of, like, going through facts on it because I like to know the makings of the movies and yeah. stuff. And that's why I always say, you know, if you have the movie and there's a making of documentary, watch it. You, you may learn stuff that you don't know. Like the spray paint. Like the spray paint. Um, There you go. But like, so Fred Decker Mm -hmm. wrote the movie. Right. But because it was too horror, they brought in uh, Ethan Wiley, who was his friend, Mm -hmm. and he just touched it up with comedy, but they only gave Ethan the credit. Mm -hmm. Like, Fred only got story credit, which I thought was crap. (laughs) Well, on IMDb, they do list both of them, though, don't they? Mm -hmm. In the credits, it's, he's only given story credit. Oh, okay. So, so on I, the movie. On the movie. Oh, okay. So I always I thought that was crap. That. Yeah. Because they both wrote it. <laughs> yeah. So like Fred wrote it and then they were like, oh, this is kind of dark. So like, so they brought in Ethan to do touch ups on it, which, and a lot of it wasn't even much. It was just like comedy routine stuff. Yeah. But because of that, Ethan got the whole credit. Yeah. I don't, uh, that's weird. Yeah. I didn't pay attention to credit. Though. And then, um. So, like, and Fred got the whole idea about this because of Twilight Zone. Because the Twilight Zone movie had just come out. So, they were all going to do, like, their own anthology film. Right. And it never happened. No. So, because this was supposed to be part of the anthology. Right. Yeah, I read all that, too. I mean, so, can you imagine, like, an anthology movie? Steve Miner, Fred Decker, Shane Black, Ethan Wiley. Like, that would have been an amazing anthology film. And it was supposed to be horror like yeah, serious it was, not comedy it was it was almost going to be like twilight zone ish right and the fact that they they couldn't get funds for it so they never did it yep but a lot of people don't know that now you do like, <laughs> like yeah. i kind of wish like i would have gone 
like we had a time machine go back in time but go make your movie yeah i'd like to see it more serious horror i mean i love the comedy don't get me wrong i love this but i wouldn't mind seeing what they would have done with it that's not comedy yeah like just a straight horror like yeah yeah i agree um on here it says story by fred decker screenplay by ethan wiley yeah so that's why i was saying so like fred wrote the script technically technically yeah but he never got credit he only got credit for story well hollywood producers damn them to hell (laughs) (laughs) um and then i learned glenn close and sigourney weaver were actually considered for sandy i'm Mm -hmm. glad neither one of them yeah me neither that would have been too much i I don't think they need them like Kay was perfect yeah she was absolutely perfect yeah and she she's i mean very attractive in her own way i mean yeah yeah stripped a kelp you'll thank me later (laughs) <laughs> I was gonna, wait wait that's a movie re- recommendation between me and him Strip to Kill is awesome and that came out in 87 so it was after she did House mm-hmm. but she also did a TV movie in 78 called Initiation of Sarah um, it was along the lines of like a Carrie type thing because when Carrie came out there were so many movies around Which, that same type of thing. William Cat was a part of Carrie. Right, right. So that's why. So, like, I knew William Cat from Carrie. I didn't right. know him from the show. No, Which, I, didn't I mean, know granted, him the, from show, the, show the show was on bef- when I was a baby. But, like, well, you, I saw Carrie you before. You almost weren't even born. Well, I saw Carrie before I saw House. So. I did too. No, no, so I did that, too. So that's where I'm like, oh, this is a guy from Carrie. I'm going to yeah. watch this. No, um, me too. I never did watch the Great I only American knew Hero. Cheers because of my dad. Cheers. <laughs> so, I didn't really watch just, much of Cheers. Either. And it's funny because now every time I watch this and George shows up, I'm like, Norm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How can you not? Um, but then, like the fun Easter egg characters that are in here. So you got Stephen Williams, who's a cop in the movie. Both we, cops were did something, right? Um, yeah. So the other cop was Friday Thirteenth. Stephen right. Williams also Friday Thirteenth. It's Crane Duke and Jason goes to hell. Yes, 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 um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yep. Steve uh, Suskind. Mm-hmm. Um, he's from Friday for Friday Thirteenth Part Three. He's the grocery store owner. Oh, okay. In the very beginning. Okay. So it's weird because this one he doesn't have the mustache. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Stephen Nichols is part of the army mm-hmm. crew. He's from Witchboard. Oh yeah. It's Brandon. Yeah. And then that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Um, the platoon's leader, mm-hmm. he was in is anything. Kevin Costner's father in Field of Dreams. Oh, it is. I never put that two and two together. Yeah. Thanks. Like, there's a I lot never of, put that one together. Yeah, like, there's a lot of fun Easter eggs. And I was like, Kay and George and Richard and... Right. Yeah, see? Good cast. So, like, it, it's a fun all-around movie. Yeah, I don't... I, I, Again, I don't think I've ever seen anybody say they hated the movie. But, I mean, I guess I can kind of see maybe some people not liking it, I guess, maybe. Because I'm weird about comedy uh, horror. I could, so. I, could, I could see some people being bored with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe a new generation now might like, be Like, I see it. a lot of people, <laughs> I don't know. Um, myself included, that actually prefer House 2 more. Oh, see, I don't. See, I, a lot of people prefer those over House 2, but I actually, I love House 2. Yeah, you like House 2. Um, but again, I also love House 4. House right. 4 is very similar along those it lines. Is. To where it's straight horror comedy, mm-hmm. um, different house, and then they kind of... They but it change, ties it in, though. They, they change details, like, because he's married again, but with a daughter, and... Mm-hmm. So the continuity is weird, but yeah. it, it's still a fun movie. Mm-hmm. Um I don't. I don't think that one's streaming anywhere. I don't. I'm I know. not sure. Um, I don't know. I bought mine through Arrow, but so that that's a weird thing. So we had House One and Two come out here in the U.S. through Arrow, mm-hmm. but Three and Four only came out through Arrow overseas. So you had to buy the Region B ones. So like here in the states, uh, last horror show was I think. I, Maybe Scream Factory? I have it. I just don't know what... what I can't remember. Oh, no. Mine, mine, is, mine is Arrow. So, like... And this is why it like, drives me crazy. I feel like mine's... The, my part three is the Arrow. The UK gets all these amazing box sets. Like, their box set was all four films. And the binding 
is the hand, like on yours. Yeah. To where it's the hand opening the door. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, that's cool. So, but aren't is an arrow from UK though? Hmm? The, from- the box said it. So this this is arrow here. So right. like we have one and two, but three and four was only. But the arrow. company aren't they UK? Yes. Well, that's why. But it drives me. But we get arrow over here in the states. Right. So I think it has more to do with licensing issues, like how we'll get movies from Screen Factory here, but they'll get them from Arrow in the UK. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's Which, really weird how all that works. I don't know. Honestly, part of me enjoys the Arrow once more because they give you more features. Yeah. I like the cover art on all of them, too. Yeah, the cover art's really amazing. Yeah. Like, And that's the thing. I do love this one is they'll give you uh, the reversible cover art. Yeah. So d- depending on what it is, like if it's single, I'll just do the arrow artwork. But if it's in a box set, I'll do the original artwork. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. It, I, I'm very weird. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do your artwork? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't think I've upgraded to to that. I, I have part two and part three, though of the arrow but i don't i haven't upgraded to that i just have the dvd i don't know why i haven't upgraded to that that's weird that is weird thinking i know it's weird that's what I'm like how many thinking. times have we seen arrow and you haven't i upgraded? don't know i have no idea <laughs> well a lot of times i do put a lot of stuff on my amazon wish list and other people buy stuff for me and i don't know i don't know i don't know i need to upgrade i don't know why i haven't done yet it's really weird <laughs> you have anything else you want to add about house Watch it if you haven't watched it. Is it on Tubi? Yes, it's on Tubi. Uh, yeah, one and two are on Tubi. Yeah, they're both on there. Because okay, we cool. always have them on in the store. So go watch it on Tubi. Um, again, he's got the Arrow Blu-ray. I've got the DVD. It has the little thing on the inside. The card? Yeah. Oh, does it have like the title tracks on the back of the card? Or is it like a booklet? It's a little booklet. If I can get the dang thing out. Yeah, it's a little booklet. That's fun. I've had this forever. Um, and then we have this. Everybody's probably like, what is that? Isn't that the coolest thing ever? So explain this real quick. So many, many moons ago, video stores would get these promotional packages for them to try and see if they wanted to purchase copies of the video you know, for their stores. So this was one of the limited promotional period items to where you got the VHS in this. And sometimes it always had a fun thing. Like, so for this one, the house lights up. Yeah, it lights up. So this was a gift from from somebody that came into Nightmare Toys and gifted it to me. And everybody, we have it hanging up in the store and everybody's always asking, can we buy it? No, you cannot buy it. (laughs) It is mine. Um, But yeah, I mean, how cool. It's heavy. Yeah. And so you can open, let me turn it around. Let's let's play with it for a minute. Turn it around. How freaking cool. And then you open it up and it had all the VHS in there. All right. Ooh, there's batteries. Oh, the batteries are coming out. So I don't think I can turn it on. But it does come on. I can't turn it on. The battery came out. Oh, here. Here, you play with it. Because we have turned it on before. Did it come undone? I wish the VHS was still in there. That'd been cool. But no, the VHS wasn't still in there, though. Oh, the batteries are probably dead. That's probably what it is, because they're old batteries, I can tell. So, like... ah. Oh, so you had this for the topper. Oh, yeah. But then this is like where the VHS would sit. Yep. And so there's actually a switch and it actually all lights up too. Yeah, it's like so the coolest promotional thing freaking ever. Are you tearing my shit up? I'm trying not to. <laughs> but it's very old. So. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's so neat. It's like the best thing. I really don't have anywhere to put it at my house right now in my collection, so that's why I just leave it here for everybody to look at and go, hey, can I buy that? And then for you guys to go, no. 
No, it's ours. <laughs> <You're allowed. laughs> no, you cannot. <laughs> so that's fun. All right. Well, I guess that's it about house, right? That's it about Anything house. Else? All right. Well, happy anniversary to house and make sure y'all go, go watch that. Go watch it on Tubi. Um, we don't have anything new in at the moment to show, but I did want to talk about, I do have my, um, the claw machine it's got stuffies in it now. We've got plushies in the mm-hmm. claw machine. So come play the claw machine. I guess everybody's been coming and playing. People have been playing it. Yay. It makes me so happy to play a claw machine. <laughs> um, but we did get in some more beach towels um, and some other stuff. So, uh, and, and everything's just in store at the moment, like I've said before. So if you're coming out here to Vegas um, for maybe Days of the Dead next month, which we will be at, um, we'll have some really cool stuff. Yep. In here for you to purchase. Um, and again, we will be at Days of the Dead, 15th, 16th, and 17th. We do have a small booth there. So make sure you come see us at Days of the Dead. And then that Thursday, we've got... Uh, Leah Voicey. Mm-hmm. From 4 to 7. From 4 to 7. So all you Art Clown fans, come on out. She played the Clown, clown Cafe. Girl. Yeah. Clown Cafe Girl yeah, in Terrifier Cafe. 2. So I wonder if she'll sing for us. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we can get her to sing. But yes, she'll be here from 4 to 7 on that Thursday, the 14th. 14th. And then on the 23rd from 5 to 7, we will have Ginger Lynn. She's going to come do a little small signing with us again. So that'll be fun. Um, She is promoting her new movie, The Gifted. Uh, The premiere to that is that afternoon here in Las Vegas. Um, And I didn't get all the information on that. So I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and then, I don't know. I think that's about it for March. Yep. We'll have a St. Patrick's Day sale as well for the 17th. We'll do that. Um, and that's really about it for March. And anything going on in April, we, we will keep y'all informed. Um, anything else you'd like to add, Brian? Like to tell everybody? Uh, was it? Oh, uh, Wednesdays, we do watch-alongs at the cafe yes. so um wednesday night watch parties wednesday night watch parties so we've had some fun ones so this past week was evil dad yes which it's classic yep and next week i have decided we are going to do friday the 13th the original okay that was a hesitation <laughs> of an okay <laughs> <All right. laughs> why are we hesitating on friday the 13th? oh because you you know, I'm always about, well, do, do one of the sequels, you know, ones that... I will. People right don't now, expect. I, I will. I, I will. Right now, since we've just started this the past couple months, I'm doing all these little OG movies that everybody likes right now. And then I'm going to start doing some other stuff later. Trust me. I have it all. But we found an uncut version on Amazon. That we're yeah, I, it seems like the uncut ones are a lot easier to get now than the standard ones yeah well both of them you have to rent though on, on amazon boo but anywho there is an uncut so we're gonna do that next week so if you're here in vegas next week on wednesday night seven o'clock at the nightmare cafe uh friday 13th we'll be showing that don't know what we're gonna do for the podcast next week we will have to figure that one out again to be determined <laughs> we'll figure it out we'll figure that out it's kind of the issue is that none of these films are coming out or the ones that do come out you know we're worried about uh, when are we going to have time to see it? Is it even going to be good? Well, this was fun because it was the anniversary. Yeah. So it's perfect movie. And uh, maybe we'll do another anniversary movie this coming week as well. And bring back old school or whatever. And then the week after that, we will do Imaginary, though. Because at that point, then Imaginary will have came out. Chauncey the Bear. Yeah, see how that goes. I could tell you how it's going to go. <laughs> it's PG-13 going to be dealing with a bunch of bullshit kids <laughs> brian is so against pg-13 i'm not against them yes, you, but i hate dealing with kids against, i know but you're against pg-13 all the time I, i'm not a lot of the there are plenty of amazing pg-13 horror films okay i mean you have insidious which was well true so yeah it's good okay i just i hate dealing with people in theaters then i don't know Oh, granted, a lot of these theaters now, when I go, they're just empty. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So I just got to find that right timing. There you go. The right I, need, time. I need to go when people aren't going to be aren't, there. Aren't there. Yeah. 
Um, real quick though, what's going on with Netflix, Brian? Net- I see a lot of people I, I on no the internet just what about mad. them raising prices? Yeah, raising prices. What do they expect? <laughs> like, the I mean, their movies cost a lot of money to make. I yep. mean, I, I guarantee Apple TV is going to do the same thing. Everybody is. I mean, I, I mean, these are like two hundred million dollar movies, and. They're not making money back. On, well, I mean, I, in a way, they are making money back on it, but not to where, you know, they put them in theaters. Right. And they're making money. So, well, I don't know. It's what everybody's talking about right now on the internet. Well, Netflix and that's, raising prices. When you have Tubi that's free and it already has a bunch of good movies. Yeah, but, you, I mean, people also don't understand, like, you know, the more and more you cut cable and sign up for these streaming things, the more content they're trying to bring to you, which means their costs are going through the roof. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they're gonna raise prices. Like it, it is what it is. Suck up, suck it up. I guess you don't get Netflix if you don't want to pay for yeah, it. Yeah, like if you don't want to pay now, for it. Don't I pay have for to it. say, I mean, we have it in some bundle thing, but I have to say, like Netflix is like the last streaming service I even go to to even watch anything though. Like I don't ever really oh, watch see, anything on Netflix I, at I, all. I feel like I'm on Netflix more now. Really? There's yeah. Nothing on there. Yeah, like Netflix watch. and Hulu. <laughs> Netflix and Hulu. Those are like, like Peacock. Once in a while, if a movie goes on there. But other than that, I'm Netflix and Hulu. Oh, uh, see, I I watch Tubi and Screenbox yeah. and I'm I'm all that. I'm not really on Screenbox. Honestly, I really thought about canceling Screenbox, but then we did the Here for Blood, which I'm like, well, okay, they get a that lot of good fun. originals and stuff, though. Their own little originals. They they get a lot of um, newer independent films, and then they have older stuff too. I have on our Amazon. We have everything within our Amazon. It's all on our Amazon. I've got the Shutter and the Screenbox, Stars, Showtime. Oh, see, Midnight I, Pulp, Freebie. I have all of that within my Amazon. But uh, literally, I I do use all of those streaming services. For I use Hulu. I use Peacock. Literally, the only one I never get on to look at is Netflix. There's just nothing on Netflix. See, I'm on Netflix me. a lot. Well, what are you watching? I'm watching movies. Because like they have like their Netflix original movies and shows and everything. So. Oh. So I'm only really watching those. I don't know. There's nothing um, horror on there. I, I'm not. I'm not really on HBO Max. Well, I have I would, it. Um, I'm not really on Prime now. Oh. But what? I will be because the boys is getting ready to start back up, and then um, got Roadhouse coming out this month, so I have to watch that. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to watch Roadhouse definitely. Um, but I mean, I see how yeah, that I mean, goes. I am on Shutter a lot because yeah, I like Shutter. watching the older movies. Yeah. But even their newer movies, I'll sit down and, and see. Watch. I don't think there's a lot of great. For me, Shutter is for Joe Bob. There's a few. They do get a few original Shutter movies, but there's to me, there's not a lot on Shutter that I watch either. I watch mainly Tubi most of the time for movies because I like all the old stuff. So yeah, I don't know. I guess uh-huh. everybody's just different. Um, Hulu and Peacock. So I, I use those for movies, but I use those also for news true crime stuff so i'm a big dateline and 2020 person i fucking love dateline and 2020 it's true crime i love that stuff and 2020 episodes come on hulu and dateline comes on peacock so i use those for that okay <laughs> seriously i know i i'm just I, I like true crime and they have really good stories and i, I love I dateline and <laughs> well was that we we i use hulu for the TV because I I don't have cable, yeah. so um like all like anything FX or something I have to go th- right. Well, which is weird because now you can watch it through Disney Plus, which yeah. I thought was extremely weird. Yeah, because like I, I turned on Disney Plus the other day to watch something and th- like the top of their menu is hey come watch American Horror Story. I'm like, well that's weird. <laughs> yeah, that is weird. Yeah, because I watch American Horror Story on Hulu. Yeah, because yeah. cuz it's all under the same umbrella now. Mm-hmm, so I mm-hmm. guess they're trying people that have Disney Plus that don't have Hulu, they could still watch all the shows right. but on Disney Plus. Right. But I'm I'm just like it's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What do y'all stream? What is your favorite streaming services? Please comment below. I'd like to know. The other Thing, real quick I wanted to talk about that everybody's talking about right now too is these pictures that have been coming out for the new Crow movie um, I'm seeing everybody not liking it at all everybody's like really mad um, me personally I'm not a Crow fan I don't know anything about the books or comic books or 
movies or anything. I've watched the original movie, Brandon Lee, like twice all the way through in my lifetime, and that's it. I, not my type of movie. Um, I don't hate it or anything. It's just not my type of movie. So yep. I've never watched any of the others. I've never really been interested in The Crow or any of that. The character's cool. I do have a few little collectibles of The Crow because I do like the character. He's kind of cool looking. So I don't really have an opinion on this subject, but a lot of people do. I know you like The Crow. So what is I'm your s- opinion? I, I, I do like The Crow. I, I have s- seen the photos this morning. Right. While I do not like what I see in the photos, that doesn't mean the movie will be bad. Right. Um, and I kind of, like, seeing it and seeing all the backlash and everything, I kind of look back at it the same way um, it was with Heath Ledger with Joker, mm-hmm. with The Dark Knight, to where everyone complained about how this was the worst thing can I they say could something? do, and then it ended up being the best thing ever. Okay, can I say something that you said that? So, I did see some people post that it looks like a cheap knockoff of a Joker. I, I guess the Joker. It, that's what I've, a lot of people have been saying. If anything, I would say it's the Joker that Sally we got with Jared Leto. Which yeah, and, the Jared and, Leto Joker. That's not, what I'm saying. And it's not a knock on Jared Leto because he was hired to do a job. He did I didn't the watch best it, so to I his abilities. Know. But like, I mean, I don't know. He's like tattooed from top to bottom, and I'm just like, I mean, this isn't the crow. Like, I get they're trying to make it for modern day, to where every, everyone's tat to hell and back. Um, so I don't know until I see like the actual movie, like I, I can't even go based on the trailer really at this point, but until I see the actual movie in June, yeah, like I'll make my, you know, final decision then where I hate it, like it, whatever. I see a lot of people not liking him being. Bill Skarsgård is a weird choice for. Is it? I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I mean, to me, I'm just like, eh, Cause, I, I mean, mean, I don't know. I mean, Grant, through the whole development hell that they had. I mean, you know, at one point, you know, we had Mark Wahlberg attached. We had Jason Momoa attached. Mark Wahlberg? Yeah. Like, a lot of... They wanted Mark Wahlberg a to lot be the of main, A lot of mainstream actors were attached to the movie, and because of how long they kept taking for the stupid movie, they just kept dropping out. I think Jason Momoa probably would have been the best choice for it. Um, But even then, he got sick and tired of waiting. Because Jason Momoa would have looked the most like the comic character. But he's so big, though. Is he a big guy? Yeah. The crow person? Because, mm-hmm. I mean, Brandon Lee that played him is like just seemed tall and lanky to me. Yeah, but I mean, how many he's action not big, stars like... at the time? So, the, so Eric, Cra- Eric Craven, Eric, Eric, right, Eric, is supposed Eric to be Craven. a big, muscular guy? Like, he he's not fully muscular, but like he's he's a big guy. No, I don't see Jason but, I Momoa mean, like, doing it at all. I, I saw Jason Momoa more than I see Bill Skarsgård. Oh. I mean, Grant, for all I know, Skarsgård oh, no. may, you know, maybe he has the look in the beginning of the movie and then changes his look through it. Like, you can't really judge them based on two photos that get released. Well, no, you can't, but everybody is. But yeah. I, I mean, everyone is, yeah, but I mean... So Mark Wahlberg was going to play him? Yeah, like when they had Oh, first, I don't like that idea Yeah, either. like there, there was a no. lot of big names attached. I think Miles Teller was attached. I, I don't know. To me, I think Bill Skargard is fine for her. But that's just me. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I I'll, I'll make my... see either the other yeah. ones. Being I'll, I'll make my assumption once I see the When movie. you see the movie, yeah. of course. Okay. Well, that's just what everybody's talking about right now is The Crow and Netflix. So. Uh, people just need to let the whole... If, it, I mean, Netflix, if you don't like it, just cancel it. Yeah. Like, what? Tubi's free. Freebie's free. I would mean, <laughs> say you have all, the, but see, and then that's our thing. People are like, well, I don't want to sit through the commercials, but like, well, you got paid for it. Like, <laughs> this is true. Like, I, I mean, if you, yeah, I mean, if you're going to pay for it, then there won't be commercials. I mean, I don't bitch about that. I, I mean, know. I don't like commercials either, but I mean, hell, it's free. Yeah. But I mean, I think also a big part of it is also this whole, you know, physical media starting to go away. Yeah. We've seen more and more. It's starting to hit everyone now. Yeah. Like, just, yes, well, as we're recording, yesterday, Sony said they were laying off 8% across, you know, the interactive board. So, any PlayStation or anything, like, all gone. Because people, you know, they're not getting the physical media copies. They rather just download it because it's simpler for them. They Stop don't have to downloading everything. Get the physical copy. They don't have to leave their house <laughs> to to go out anywhere. 
Well, you don't have to go out anywhere. You just order a physical copy of something know. online. Yep. Yeah, but, but see, that's what makes it harder. Is like even now with Amazon, it's really hard to order physical media copies because everything's being taken away. Like well, I, Shaw Factory ain't going nowhere. Well, no, I mean the boutique Aero ain't going nowhere. The boutique places aren't going anywhere. But like in the way of like main physical media, I mean like Walmart's getting rid of all their stuff. Target's getting rid of their stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, they like, pretty much already have. I mean, I w- and that's what drives me. I see these videos of everyone going to their WalMarts and Targets. It's filled top to bottom. Not here. Not here. <laughs> not here. No, not here. Um, but it's like I wanted to go pick up a copy of Black Mass because uh, Devin's movie came out this week. Can't get fucking anywhere. Oh, I, I feel to, like I seen like it one I, day. Like I, I saw a, like I saw a thing on line to where oh you could get it at Walmart I'm like awesome I'm just you know gonna go on here see if not available in store not available for delivery oh I'm I like, thought I seen it at Walmart the other day though I don't know I don't know it's, uh, and I'm like well this is kind of an issue like they want us you know keep saying uh, buy physical media but then they're like oh no we're gonna take them away right I don't know and don't the whole thing is that. they don't want you to own the movie they rarely have you you know, license it out, rent it, something to where you don't physically own it. That's what I say about that. <laughs> I like collecting movies, so anyway. Well, I mean, all my money is just going to go to Arrow, Vinegar Syndrome, Screen Factory, all that. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, they're going to continue to make movies, so. All right. <sighs> well, okay. That was a great discussion. Thank you for the insight on The Crow. And I guess we will see everybody next week. Again, we don't know what we're going to do. It will be to be determined. But if you are in Vegas next week, make sure you come to Nightmare Cafe at 7 o'clock. And we'll be watching Friday the 13th, the original. Uncut. (laughs) All right. Well, we will see you all next week. And you all have a spooky weekend. Bye. Bye, guys.